I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a U.S. Navy trained psychiatrist, and over the past 10 years, I've been tracking brain metrics in myself and my clients using neurotechnology tools like the Muse headband. Over the past few months, I've seen a surge in interest in a dietary compound that has been around for years. A study came out in Nature's Scientific Reports that suggests that creatine may enhance cognitive function when taken in a specific way. The catch is that the effective dose is about five times higher than what most people are taking as a weightlifting supplement. So I decided to put it to the test as a cognitive enhancer with brain data measurements. The study suggested taking 0.35 grams per kilogram, which equated to about 25 grams of creatine daily for me. That turned my normal one scoop into five scoops of creatine daily during lunchtime. So I started dumping five scoops of creatine every day into my almond milk at lunch to see if there was any noticeable change in my brain performance that week. Actually consuming that amount of creatine wasn't too difficult to do. That amount of creatine actually suspended in my almond milk decently well if I stirred it and drank it right after. If I waited a while, it would settle to the bottom of the glass. But if I just threw it back, it wasn't that big of a deal. Creatine is tasteless and all I noticed was that the almond milk was a little gritty. At first, I was a little concerned. I was like, is this too much? Is it gonna cause bladder or kidney stones? But I did my research and there's no increased risk there. The main side effect would be nausea if you took it on an empty stomach. And I might have felt a little nauseous on one or two days, but really I didn't notice it at all, especially if I took it with my lunch. Now this was actually a good week to test the creatine loading because it was quite a stressful week for me. Every month now I'm running a five day brain health challenge group coaching program which takes a lot of brain power on my side to execute, especially since I just started the program and need to make a lot of changes. So that was this past week, and while taking the higher levels of creatine, I did feel like my cognition was okay, and perhaps I was having more mental resilience than the previous month when I ran the groups. The sessions seemed to be going smoother with me less tired after the group calls, which was noticeable because the first time I ran the program, I was just exhausted. And this time around, I noticed that I had more energy in the evening after the calls. By the way, if this type of brain health and brain hacking content interests you, be sure to subscribe to join our community and give a thumbs up to this video to help support the channel. Now, when I looked at my brain metrics every day during these higher levels of creatine and ran multiple tests, it didn't seem like it was doing anything. My brain metrics were stuck at relatively low levels without any signs of improvement through the week. At first, I almost gave up on the experiment and chalked it up to, oh, it's just recent social media chatter, another biohacking hype round. But then I took a second look at the creatine loading research and realized that I had made a critical mistake in how I was measuring its effects and that that mistake might have been hiding creatine's true potential as a brain enhancement tool. My mistake was linked to my habits of taking creatine as a muscle supplement instead of a cognitive enhancer. Now, way back in my teenage years, I got really serious about lifting weights because I was cut from the high school hockey team and I was pissed off and I wanted to be stronger and bigger than everyone else that had wronged me. So I really got into weightlifting and I was reading bodybuilding magazines to learn about weightlifting techniques and supplementation. And they would always have creatine advertised in there as a way to increase muscular strength and size. So eventually I got creatine and started taking it, but I always felt a little sketchy using it because if you put it in little baggies in your luggage or your backpack, I always thought people would see it and think that I was taking other substances that look similar to it. And this was back when probably a lot of less people knew about creatine. It seems so popular these days, but it's hard to remember back then when not really anybody was doing biohacking or taking creatine. Now a bunch of research has come out about it and it's had a surge in popularity, especially in recent years. So over the last couple of years, I've definitely gotten back into taking five grams per day as a supplement. But then last month, I heard all this chatter about taking five times that amount as a cognitive enhancer. And I got really curious, especially since I've been working with these devices like the Muse headband and wearable headphones that are coming out with these brain health measurements. 
Now in those bodybuilding magazines, they didn't actually explain how creatine works, but I learned later because I was a biology major and I am a medical doctor, taking creatine daily as a supplement leads to increased levels of phosphocreatine, which is used by the body to rapidly regenerate ATP, which is the primary energy source for muscular contractions. So it makes sense that if you have higher levels of creatine in your system, that leads to higher levels of ATP, which gives you more strength and stamina during your workouts to train muscles harder and eventually lead to increased muscular growth over time. But my understanding is that this is something you needed to take every day over the course of weeks to eventually lead to larger skeletal muscle sizes. So I started digging and I'm like, how do they actually measure the creatine levels in the body? Well, you can take blood levels, you could do MRI imaging. They can show through imaging that these daily doses of three to five grams of creatine are generally sufficient to maintain those elevated muscle creatine stores if you've been taking it for a month and need to enhance the levels of ATP in your system. But with those same measurements, they show that creatine levels in the brain increase more slowly and don't reach saturation as fully as skeletal muscle, especially at the recommended five grams per day dosing. Now this is because the creatine transporters at the blood-brain barrier are more tightly regulated and have more limited capacity to get creatine to the brain. So how does this all actually lead to increasing cognitive performance with higher levels of creatine supplementation? The authors of this study cited prior work that showed that you might actually be able to increase cognitive performance if you blitz the blood-brain barrier creatine transport receptors with high levels of dietary creatine creatine all taken in one dose for a temporary increase in creatine that has crossed the blood-brain barrier. Theoretically, that would give the brain more ATP energy that would increase its performance on various cognitive tests and biomarkers. At the beginning, I didn't want to bias myself in testing, so I had heard that 0.35 grams per kilogram of creatine would increase my cognitive performance, so I continued my regular routine of taking the creatine at lunch and then just increased the amount to 25 grams. And part of my normal routine is that I was measuring my brain performance in the morning. But when I didn't see any increase in my metrics after four days of starting this routine, so I took another look at the research and realized that the peak creatine levels in my brain were supposed to be happening 90 minutes after ingestion with the strongest cognitive performance metrics happening at that time. In the research, there were still positive benefits up to nine hours later, but they didn't have any data past that. And that was the problem. I was taking 25 grams of creatine at 12 noon and not measuring my brain performance until 6 a.m. the next day. That's 18 hours later and could have been well outside of the effect window to see full benefit. Now, specifically, I was measuring peak alpha. It's the peak amplitude within the alpha band, which has been shown to reflect faster processing speed, more efficient brain performance, and better working memory, which could all be potentially related to any improvements I would see from creatine. The idea is that if creatine boosts your brain's ATP supply, especially under stress, we might see a shift upward in the peak alpha frequency. So that's what I was looking for. I've seen my peak alpha levels trend everywhere from 9.4 hertz after international travel and sleep deprivation, all the way up to over 11 hertz after a cold plunge, for example. And recently, I've been under a lot of stress to redesign my website and launch a whole new course, coupled with the fact that I've had allergies this spring that have required me to take antihistamines. I recently also sprained my neck when I was doing overhead tricep extensions in the gym lifting weights. So my back's been messed up, it's disrupted my sleep. So I've actually been feeling pretty cruddy over the last six weeks and my peak alpha levels have totally reflected that and have averaged back down to about 9.6 hertz. Now I thought that was actually a pretty good reason to do this creatine loading regimen to get me back on track. So to recap, I was taking creatine at noon and not measuring my peak alpha levels until 6 a.m. the next day as my normal routine. At first these levels were just stuck. My peak alpha wouldn't budge no matter how much creatine I was taking. It just hovered around 9.6 all week. There was one random spike up to 10.7 hertz. 
but I was like, okay, the creatine's finally kicking in. Like we'll see the sustained effect for the rest of the week. But then it dropped back down to 9.5 Hertz the next day. And honestly, I was ready to give up and maybe post a video saying, I didn't see any improved results with peak alpha measurement related to creatine, which is something that I had found for methylene blue, for example. But after I looked at the study again, I realized that the research measured cognition at 1.5 to nine hours post dose with peak benefits at 90 minutes. So it turned out I was measuring too early. And when I changed the timing, this is what I found. Over the course of multiple days, I saw different levels. On day one, for instance, I saw a 9.5 Hertz measurement in the morning with all the way up going to 10.3 Hertz in the afternoon, about 90 minutes after I took the 25 grams of creatine. From there, things started to actually improve. On day two, I had a level of 10 Hertz in the morning, which got bumped up to 10.3 Hertz in the afternoon. And then on day three, I had a 10.2 Hertz, which bumped all the way up to 10.4 Hertz in the afternoon. It was a consistent increase of about 0.3 to 0.8 Hertz, which is outside of the normal fluctuation range that I see for myself, which is about 0.1 to 0.2 Hertz if I haven't taken any nootropics or done anything to intervene on my peak alpha levels between the morning and afternoon measurements. I will say that when I was taking the creatine, it wasn't like this clear stimulatory effect like I would expect from taking caffeine or Magic Mind, for example, but I do feel like there was a bit of a clearing of my mind and more motivation to get through the group coaching calls. I think my energy levels were higher and I felt about 50% better during and after the group calls where I just had more energy and I wasn't as drained as the previous month when I was doing the group coaching program. Now, looking at the original study that I based my little N of one study off of, the original study didn't use peak alpha. They used event-related potentials in terms of brain measurements, specifically the P300 waveform, which is tied to attention and cognitive effort. They found that after the subjects took 0.35 grams per kilogram, of creatine, they had an increased P300 amplitude and faster reaction times compared to when they were sleep deprived. And that tracks with what I saw. The biggest spikes in peak alpha for me happened when I was underslept, which made the peak alpha level scores lower in the morning. And when I took creatine, there tended to be a larger gain compared to when I was already starting with high levels because I had gotten a good night of sleep. Now, I wish I could have tested P300 specifically with the Muse, and they do have that ERP capability on the way, but it hasn't been fully released yet, so I had to just stick with Peak Alpha for now. I also thought that it would have been nice in the study if they would have had a control group that wasn't sleep deprived to see how creatine affected their brain. Basically, everybody in the study was sleep deprived, and that's where they saw the biggest results from the creatine blitz. Now, at the end of the day, the question is, should I take five grams of creatine or 25 grams of creatine? And one thing that I think actually factors into this discussion is the cost. When I'm taking five grams of creatine, that's 50 cents per day. But if I increase it to 25 grams of creatine, that's about two and a half dollars per day of creatine, which monthly goes from $15 a month to $75 a month. And what I noticed is what the study said, it works best if you're sleep deprived. They also said that vegans tend to have lower creatine creatine levels in their diets, they might benefit from taking higher levels of supplementation as well. Based on where I'm at, unless I'm sleep deprived, I don't think I need to be taking 25 grams of creatine a day. Now I do have another child on the way in August, so I'll definitely be trying this when I'm sleep deprived from having an infant in the house. We'll see if it increases my peak alpha level then when I'm going to be a lot more sleep deprived. So overall, I'm gonna keep taking five grams of creatine per day normally, but if I travel with time changes or if there's a new baby in the house or something that disrupts my sleep, I definitely will kick it up to 25 grams per day for a week to help my brain generate more ATP to help overcome the sleep deprivation. I think that this really works. Now, if you'd like to learn more about these biohacking strategies based on real brain data, take a look at my five-day course, Sharper Every Day. And if you wanna see what methylene blue did to my peak alpha levels, take a look at this video here, and I'll see you on the other side.